you've ever tried shiny hunting, you will know. Shinies are rare. Just how rare? Well, the odds of finding a shiny in any normal encounter are 1 in 8,192. This means if you're soft resetting for a shiny, after 5,678 soft resets, there's still a 50% chance you won't have found one. In fact, after 8,192 soft resets, there's actually a 37% chance you'll come up empty. Even after 15,000 soft resets, there's still a 16% chance you won't have found your elusive shiny. At 30 seconds per soft reset, you can expect it to take an average of 68 hours to find your shiny. Clearly for shiny hunting you need either a lot of patience or a lot of luck. So this is my setup. Uh, at the moment I'm playing Heart Gold version. My DS is connected to an Arduino Uno, which is connected via serial to my laptop. I also have a webcam. Now it's in this box so that I can seal the entire unit off and get consistent light. At the moment the wiring is a bit more complicated than it needs to be. I'm currently working on a Masuda method program but at the end of this video I'll show you a much more simple way to do this for soft resetting. So if you just give me a moment I'll get it all rigged up and I'll show you how the software works. So we've got our webcam and DS set up inside this box so we'll just close the lid down on that jump over to my laptop here. Now the main program is written in Visual Studio C++ and it utilizes OpenCV libraries which are our libraries that you can download for free and they're used to access the webcam. So if we just run that now okay, you can see it's opened up on the webcam. Now this is designed basically to mimic what a human player would do. So we'll just press A at random intervals and you should hopefully be able to see there's a little blue square, it'll become a bit more obvious shortly, you can just see it there. That's looking for the player's cap when we go into battle there. So now once it sees that, there's going to be a red square that shows up here on the Mewtwo, looks at the RGB values in that square and it returns them over here. So we can see red 128, green 108, blue 233. So it decides that it's not a shiny, it soft resets, and then it runs through the cycle again. So it's just going to be pushing A at random intervals. I saved the game in front of Mewtwo, so that uh, we'll just go directly into battle, and it pushes A here. Again, it's looking for the yellow color on the cap, which it sees there. Then it will look at the red square up here, decide again it's not shiny and soft reset. Now if we look at these RGB values, we'll see there's just a slight variation um, between the two, but they're more or less the same. So what the software is basically looking for is a large change in the RGB values, and that will happen when it sees a different color of the shiny Pokemon. Uh, so at that point the program will not soft reset, and it will just go into an infinite loop, um, just displaying the image on the webcam. And here we go. Again, not shiny. You can check those pixels and soft reset. So I'm just going to leave this running and uh, we'll come back a little bit later and see how it's going. Here we are back after 5,965 soft resets. We have found our shiny. As you can see over here, there was a large change in these RGB values, particularly the green and blue, when we did come across our shiny. The software has actually also captured a video of the shiny encounter.
22 that I just caught. I've since transferred it to my Gen 6 game. I synchronized for an atom in nature as this one's destined to become a Mewtwo X. And I'll just quickly show you some of the other shinies that I've got. Ho-Oh, Magia, Kyogre, Groudon, Rayquaza, Virizion, and another Mewtwo. Thanks for watching my video, I hope you guys enjoyed, and stay tuned for some quick details on the wiring setup. As a quick disclaimer, these instructions are relevant only to this particular version of Nintendo DS, and other models may be slightly different. I also recommend using an older Nintendo DS that you don't particularly care about much, as this does require hard soldering to the buttons. You can see here I've soldered a wire to the center of each button. For soft resetting you only actually have to do this to button A and also start select L and R. Under the flexible metal pad the button looks like this with two ground contacts on the outside and in my case a 3.3 volt contact in the middle. The button is pressed by making that 3.3 volt contact in the middle go to zero volts. The Arduino only needs to have two outputs utilized, one for button A and the other for buttons start, select, L and R. The Arduino uses 5 volt logic, so a potential divider circuit is used to get the 3.3 volts we need for the DS. Since the button is pressed by going from the high 3.3 volt state to the 0 volt state, the Arduino outputs will be normally high, and then to press the buttons they will go to the low 0 volt state. On the breadboard the red wire will be connected to button A, and the orange wire will be connected to buttons start, select, L and R, and then we are done.